Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to create a fixed layout EPUB or eBook directly from InDesign CC. Now fixed layout EPUB is a new feature in InDesign that allows you to take advantage of the EPUB standard which is now up to EPUB 3.0 to create a document that is basically universal, works across multiple platforms on the desktop like Mac and Windows, but more importantly, works across multiple device platforms as well, such as iOS, Android, and Windows. So from this, basically this one format, I can safely distribute it any way I want and have it work on any device as long as that device has a compatible EPUB 3.0 reader, which most of or all of the platforms do and they're free in most cases to download. So with that, let's take a look at the process and how it works. Now here I am in InDesign. I'm going to just show you briefly how to set up the document, but I already have a document ready to go that I'll open so we don't spend too much time doing things in InDesign that you probably already know how to do. So first and foremost, to create the document, we go up to our file menu, new document, and there it defaults to print by default unless you've changed your defaults. And what I'm going to do is change the intent from print to digital publishing. That will automatically pick the iPad page size. You can pick whatever page size you want. Um, but again, it's going to be fixed. So whichever one you pick, it's really the aspect ratio and the size. And that's what it's going to be fixed at. So since I, I expect most people will probably view these on tablets and computers, I'm going to stick with the bigger sizes such as the iPad or Android 10 inch and as opposed to the smaller sizes of the Kindle and the iPhone. But whatever you pick, that's what it will be. So I'm going to pick iPad and the only other thing I'm going to do is turn off the primary text frame because I just don't need it for this. All right, so now I, I can go in and tell it how many pages I want and here's the beauty of it because uh, it's digital. I don't have to worry about a printing cost. I don't have to worry about if I print 50 pages versus 20 you know, trying to keep the cost down. So it's really make the book whatever you want, make the document whatever you want in terms of pages. Now for the sample, we're just going to create three. Um, and again, it can be an odd number because once again, it's not a printed book. Or if it were a printed book, then I would make it the number of pages as just as uh, in the book as well. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now, in the past, if I were creating an EPUB, the problem would be I'd have to worry about the layout and what's going to move around because EPUB traditionally is a reflowable format. But now I, I can finally not have to worry about that because however I designed it in InDesign, that's how it's going to look in my EPUB. So for example, if I choose to place a photo and we'll go ahead and grab one here, I think this is the one I want, yep. If I place this photo and I decide that I want it across the top of the page as my cover, no problem. I place it across the top of the page. If I decide that it's coming down too much and I just want to shrink the frame, I can shrink the frame, move the picture up inside the frame, and kind of nudge it up just a little bit more and get it just the way I want. If I want to put some text down here, I create a text frame. If I want to put another image down here, I can't. I don't have to deal, I don't have to think about what's going to shift or move around once I export it. Now, uh, if I go to the next page, I can continue working on the next page without finishing the first page. That's the beauty of um, publishing and desktop publishing. So if I want to choose file and grab three images this time, we'll grab, uh, let's see, I think I want this one, this one, and this one. We'll grab those three images and we'll place those as well. So when I choose place, I can go ahead and grab uh, or tell it to place one big frame. But keeping in mind, I want to divide this up into three frames by just hitting the up arrow key. So now that I've got my three frames, we'll go ahead and size it down a little bit and get them right where I want them. And there are my three frames. And I can again fill those proportionally so they fill up the space. Now, again, if I want text, I can just go ahead and grab my text uh, tool and create a text frame. And I can either type that text or I can fill it with placeholder text uh, if I don't have the text ready. So now that it's filled, I can, again, just keep designing this any way I want, using whatever fonts, whatever sizes I want, and just keep going. And on this third page, I'm going to have some intera some interactivity in terms of a movie. So I can go to my file menu, choose place, and go grab a movie. Now the question is going to be, well, what movie format can I use? 
Well, that's going to depend on what, it, what you want it to play back on. So since we're targeting both desktops and mobile devices, the most common format that will play on pretty much everything is H.264.mp4. If I place any other format, .mov, you know, flash file, whatever, then I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to limit myself to what devices can play it back. But every device that I can think of can play back an h264.mp4 file. So as long as you encode it that way for devices, you should be okay. And if you're using Adobe's Premiere Pro with the media encoder or just the media encoder, the media encoder has all the presets for all the devices. So if you pick one of those, you'll be good to go. So now let's go ahead and place the movie. There we go. Get the movie icon, and now I can go ahead and just drag this out, and it will place the movie, and in a few seconds, it will build the poster frame for that movie, which is the first frame, which, of course, I can change that in InDesign as well. So we can go ahead and tighten this up. We can get the movie anywhere we want, and I don't have to do anything else. That movie will just work inside my EPUB, and more importantly, it'll be embedded inside my EPUB. I don't have to do anything extra to it. So now that we've got this done, again, we can keep going, of course, adding in the text and things we want. But like I said, I've got a document already ready to go. So let's close this one and open up the one that's finished. So here it is. Same cover image. I've added some text and other elements below. We go to the next page where I've added uh, multiple images, more text, and social media icons complete with hyperlinks. Uh, that are in InDesign's hyperlink panel. And of course, uh, last but not least, this last page containing the movie. So now, I, again, if I want to keep adding pages, I keep adding pages with more and more elements that I want them to have. But if I'm ready to go, I go to my file menu, I choose export, and I choose EPUB fixed layout from the format menu. So at this point, I can export it wherever I want. I'll replace the one that I tested earlier. And now uh, I get some cool features like the ability to choose my cover image. If I had designed an image in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever, and I want to use that as my cover image, I can. In this case, I'm just going to let it rasterize the first page as the cover. If I want to put in any metadata, I can put in the metadata of the image or the uh, document. So I can say, what's the, it's called World Travel is the title. And if I want to say the creator is me, I can do that. If I want to put a date, description, publisher, all that stuff, I can put that in. Once I click OK, that EPUB will export out as a self-contained document ready to go and use any way I want. So I've already got it out and let's head over to my ebook reader, which in this case, I'll, matter of fact, I'll even take you out one more level. This is iBooks on the Mac, which is built into Mac OS uh, 10.9 and higher and uh, so that this one already supports EPUB 3.0 so I just use this as my default but here's my document that I just created opened up in, in or in iBooks I can page through it I get the same uh, rendering of my text and graphics everything looks great I can even click on my social media links and it will take me to those links in my browser so there's my uh, Twitter page if I uh, scroll back and go here, I can play the movie. If I play the movie, it plays um, in place, or I can even Hello go and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry screen. White, and in this update, we're going to take a look so at there you have it. what's new. Uh, that's the way it looks in iBooks on the desktop. But like I said, this is multiple platforms, including mobile devices. So let's see what it looks like on a mobile device. As a matter of fact, I've got my iPad running here. Let's go ahead, just make sure we're still looking at the screen of the iPad. Let's go ahead and share that screen. There we go, looks like it's there. Let's bring it up. And there's the iPad. So I'm gonna just pull the iPad over a bit. And there's the document on the iPad. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap it. That will bring up the book. And again, I can page through it. I see the same rendering of text and images, including the same links. Last time I tapped on Twitter, this time I'll, or clicked on Twitter, this time I'll tap on uh, YouTube. It takes me to my YouTube page right in the browser on the device. And of course, those links can go anywhere I want them to go. I just create those in, in, um, in InDesign. 
Last but not least, here's the page with the movie. And of course, I can play the movie back. And same thing, I get the button in the bottom right hand corner Hello, to go full to screen. So if I want to go full screen on Creative the movie, Cloud TV, there it my is name is Terry screen. White. And in this update, we're going to. So I'm going to go ahead and say done. So we go back down. And there it is on the iPad. Now, I like I said, this that's really the device I targeted. So as you can see, it's taking advantage of the full screen of the iPad. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, swipe back and it's got the exact aspect ratio. But sometimes people may be viewing this on a smaller device, such as a phone. So let's see what that experience will look like. I have my iPhone here. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring the iPhone up. And at this point, I'm looking at it now on the right hand side on my iPhone. I can uh, scroll through the document. And of course the text may be too small and difficult to read at this size screen. So, but I still have pinch and zoom. I can pinch and zoom the text up as clean and as much as I want. And of course, I can go down and go and go to the next page, including the HD movie that I put in, in the uh, ebook. There's the movie playing back uh, from the phone directly from onto my um, onto my iPhone and mirrored in front of you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and say done, go back and go back and of course we have the hypermedia or the hyperlinks for the social media and again if i want to tap and go to twitter i can tap and it will take me to the browser in twitter right on the phone and show me that page so there you have it we can go ahead and of course navigate back to our epub running on the iphone android phone windows phone tablets desktop mac windows as long as the person has an EPUB 3.0 reader, they will see your publication. Now, how do you distribute this? What is it? Where is it? Well, I, again, I exported this out to the desktop. So if we go look at the desktop here, let's go back here, there we go. And we, uh, we view the desktop. There's the EPUB. It's an 87 megabyte file because 87 megabytes of it is the movie. So you have to keep that in mind. The more movies and things you add, the bigger the file will be. But at this point, it's all self-contained. I can email this out if I have an email program that supports 87 megabytes, which I don't. I could put it on a uh, put it in my Creative Cloud Files folder and share it. I can you know um, FTP it. I can put it on my website and let people download it. I can do whatever I want with this document. And the best part is, unlike an application, I didn't have to become a developer. I didn't have to do certificates or have it signed. I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was export it from InDesign and it's ready to go and usable by anyone I distribute this to, however I distribute it. If I do want to sell it, I can upload it to bookstores like the iBookstore and set a price and start selling it. I can be my own self-publisher with a layout that looks exactly the way I designed it. So that's it for this episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. Hope to catch you on the next one. Thank you.